Good afternoon, everyone. It's a uh, great pleasure and honor for me to welcome a Duke alum back, uh, though I'm sure she's happy to be here given the weather temperature differences between Boston and uh, North Carolina. Um, so my name is Morali Goraswamy, for those of you who don't know me. Uh, I am a professor in the medical school in psychiatry uh, and in medicine. I also am a faculty here at the Duke Institute for Brain Sciences. And uh, I work with uh, technology and brain health and cognitive health. So if there are any students uh, interested in exploring that area, uh, please get in touch with me. I want to uh, uh, introduce our speaker. Uh, Lena is a PhD student uh, at the joint Harvard-MIT program in medical engineering. She's also the co-head of the MIT uh, Hacking Medicine uh, program and gave a uh, fascinating TEDx talk, uh, which is on YouTube. Uh, and it's an absolute delight to welcome her back. She's a Duke graduate, and I thought this would be a perfect forum to sort of bring doctors, engineers, and clinicians, and others working in biomedical engineering together, because even though we're all so close together, we never seem to get together and talk. So this is a perfect uh, uh, first date. Let me put it that way. All right, thank you so much, Marani and Jeff, for having me here at the Duke Institute for Health Innovation. I'm so excited to see the number of people here to talk about health outcomes and get engaged in this movement. So my goal for the next 40 minutes or so, and then we'll have some kind of Q&A, is to talk a little bit about health outcomes, what they are, why they matter, some of the success stories that have come out of them, and then how you can organize one of these events and how you can get involved. Before we get into that, I want to just set the stage a little bit so the context that all of this is happening. So what's going on in the world of health innovation right now? Well, first, he's really warm, the link is on YouTube Drive. And this is a quote um, that just came out about two weeks ago by one of the, most, the, one of the wealthiest and most influential investors in the world. And he said that every smart tech person he knows is working in healthcare. So, I don't think you would have said this 10 years ago. So what is it about right now that all these tech people are flooding to healthcare? What is it about right now that billion dollar tech companies like Jawbone are getting into health centers? What is it about right now that Google has decided to open Google Link Ventures with 100 doctors and scientists and focus on projects like nanoparticles that can detect what is it about right now that $4 billion were invested in health startups, which is more than the past three years of funding for healthcare combined? And the answer is that there is a medical revolution happening. The majority of doctors say they wouldn't choose that path for them. Costs are outrageous and not correlated with care. Patients are unhappy with their relationship with their providers. So this perfect storm is going of dissatisfaction with the status quo. At the same time, meeting this storm are all sorts of technological advances like mini track sensors, like um, advanced communication technology, increased computing power and small chips. These are enabling things like wearables that will eventually be tracking every vital sign Things like at-home diagnostics. Scanadu is one of the companies participating in the X Prize um, Health Challenge, Health Challenge. So the winner of that prize will have developed a device that enables a lay person to correctly diagnose 20 some different diseases <laughs> with the device that they really possess the And we have things like Thank you. 
right here. Don't move. Uh, so I'd like to show a five-minute video of the health hackathon. A picture is worth a thousand words, and this will help set the stage for the rest of our conversation here today.
just to plant the seed in different areas and then watch it grow. So in terms of 
organizing a health system. <coughs> one of the most important things is getting the right ingredients in the room, so getting the right combination of people in the room. We, all our events are free, but we ask people to apply. So it's a short little application where people enter in information about themselves, um, ideas they have for the hackathon, and so we accept people trying to get an equal distribution of engineers, designers, clinicians, and business owners. So how many of you here today raise your hand if you're from the medical side of things? Your doctor, nurse, therapist, awesome. So for all of you, going to a health hackathon is walking into a room full of people who want to solve your problems and make your life easier. Projects at Health Hackathon are literally based around stories that people tell, oftentimes clinicians, about pain points that they've experienced in their own practice. How about raise your hand if you're an engineer, technical background, if you're a scientist? Awesome, awesome. And you're allowed to raise your hand more than once, like one of them. So for all of you, a Health Hackathon is a way to apply your skills to problems that there are real problems that are going to make a difference in people's lives. How about business, people with a business background? Okay. here? Awesome. awesome. So you all are critical to any health hackathon team because no matter how creative and amazing the technological innovation is, if it doesn't also think about how to generate revenue and make money, it's going to die, and then it's not actually going to benefit anyone. How about designers? Designers? Awesome, awesome. My favorite. Uh, so, a lot of people have this misconception that design is about making things great. It's not. Design is about understanding your users, and historically that hasn't been done very well in medicine. So, your skills as designers makes a huge difference when applied to healthcare. So, this is really great. The diversity of perspectives are presented. If we could basically have our own very successful health hackathon with everyone in the room right here. Something, so typically MIT Hacking Medicine has done general health hackathons. But more and more recently, we've done themed events. So this could be something, this was an art group, this was a different event, but focused on making the breast milk not <coughs> We've also done events of specifically focused on pediatrics, or specifically focused on emergency medicine. Uh, so when we have these themed events, it's so important to get the end user in the room. So in the case of the breast impact, um, it was so important to, to get moms there, to get dads there, to get the babies there, because these are the people who ultimately end up using breast milk um, and having to interface with them. <coughs> So once we get the right people in the room at Health Hackathon, we have a little presentation we call Hack 101. And so we walk people through what they should expect at the weekend, um, the schedule, and then we have some hack do's and hack don'ts. So in terms of hack do's, we tell people to open themselves up to crazy ideas. A hackathon is a place to say yes to ideas, not to shut them down. That's not the place for that. Though. To seek diverse teams, the most successful teams are those that have all these different skill sets and perspectives and presented. To reach out for help, because in addition to bringing an amazing cohort of participants, we also bring positive mentors in these different areas. If an idea isn't working, we tell teams not to keep trying, just to pivot and iterate. And sometimes teams will do that, you know, half a dozen times during the two days. The best projects are also the most focused. They're solving a very specific problem. And then, most importantly, is teams should really build something, not just talk about building something, but really build it. Pack So we tell people, don't worry about passing, don't worry about ownership. That's not the time and place at a health hackathon for this. Health hackathons are about generating lots of ideas, free flow of information. And one of the most important things you can get done in this weekend at a hackathon is validating your problem and making sure you're solving a real problem. You'd be surprised, that's actually one of the hardest parts. And 
then, again, not developing too broad of a solution, not being negative. We want people to say yes and not be totally shut down. All right, so what about the maybe grade? So that's kind of like how we preempt people, how we get them excited um, in a room. What goes into the specific day to day? Uh, so our events are typically from okay. Saturday to a Sunday. And how does problem selection and team formation happen? We have a process that we've tweaked in the over 35 hackathons we've done all over the world. And this process works really well. Typically, our teams, um, people at our events, don't have teams beforehand, don't have projects picked out beforehand. So we make that all happen on Saturday morning. We have two rounds of pitching. The first round is what we call problem. So this is the opportunity. Anyone who has any sort of idea of what they want to work on that weekend, they come to the front of the room, they have the microphone for 60 seconds, and they explain that problem. No slides, no extra things, just tell a story about the problem. And we tell people not to focus on the solution yet. Just tell a story, speak from first-hand experience. Why is this something worth after that round of pitching, we have a, a mingling session. So this is when you know I reach out to Jeff and say, hey, I really liked your idea, and um, I want to work on something similar. Here's what I was thinking. Do you want to work together? After that round of mingling, we have a second round of pitching that's more solution focused. So I might come up to the front of the room and say something like, hey, I met up with this person. We're going to tackle this problem, and we're looking for a designer and a developer to join our team. After that, that's about the structure that we give to a health platform. And then it's organized chaos from there. So teams continue to form. Um, the MIT Hacking Medicine team is really great, very experienced at hackathon, and we're very hands-on. So with team formation, we'll get right in there and help people make connections, help teams form. Teams are too big, we might slip them up, um, really get people settled into teams and going to the corners of their room as quickly as possible. That's also when we set mentors to some people. So we have these amazing mentors, and every it's impossible for a team to not talk to mentors, because every few hours, we'll either send someone from our team, one mentor over there to talk to people, make sure they're solving, a problem that's well validated and see if they need <coughs> And then teams will keep hacking throughout Saturday into the night through Sunday, and then Sunday afternoon there's final presentations. So teams get three minutes to present what they did that weekend, and then followed by two minutes of QA from panel judges. And there's cash prizes, but most importantly, there's experience and opportunity prizes that we give out. So these might be something like um, a meeting with an investor, or mentorship from an entrepreneur, or if we're working with an incubator, we have that winning team skip a step in the application process, or the winning team gets to present at a conference. So these are prizes that encourage teams to keep working on their ideas post hackathon, keep going forward, and keep the momentum going. What are some of the other hackathon success stories? AIR is a really great um, example of a group of strangers that met at a hackathon and created something to save their lives. AIR tackles this problem where millions of babies die every year due to breathing troubles after birth. But the deaths are easily preventable if. Um, medical trainer is trained to perform to help the baby breathe using one of these devices. The problem is that training is hard, expensive, and important. So these two doctors came together with two engineers at a health hack one to tackle this problem. So the doctors had a resuscitator there and showed the device. And then during the mingling session, the mechanical engineer came over and said he had experience in the automotive industry. Maybe I can use some of my spare parts to develop an add-on to this. And so we did. And the team
team developed the solution that's in, it's an inexpensive add-on to existing resuscitators that gives the user immediate feedback on whether or not they're using this device correctly. So now the device itself is able to train you. And one of the coolest parts about this is that this mechanical engineer with experience in the automotive industry was able to apply his skills with cars to solving a problem. <laughs> the team created field testing in Uganda, they won a grant. Um, now they're getting ready for FDA approval. And although the product was built for Uganda, American doctors have seen their product, and now they want it too because they have the same people. So the team is also going to deploy the solution in a pilot in the United States as well. A couple of other success stories. Codemetrics is a company that helps keep diabetic feet healthy. So they do early detection of diabetic foot ulcers. And they've gotten a lot of good success. So they went from a house they did really well in the MIT business plan competition. They participated in one of the most prestigious health incubators, Rock Health. They got $4 million of funding, and they're in the middle of an FDA So this crazy idea that started at a health hackathon is now in you know, over 100 people's homes. And what the co-founders will tell you is that the hackathon was just this lucky combination of sitting at their table was you know, this expert in sensors and this expert in machine learning. And that team just happened to come together at the right place at the right time when they were tackling this problem. Smart Scheduling is a really cool company that came about basically the, the husband of a doctor came to a health hackathon and he said, my wife's worst days are when her patients don't show up. And she comes home and she's cranky and she's unhappy. Is there something we can do about this? <laughs> Is there something we can do to help predict when patients are going to be a no-show? So some engineers heard this and they had experience with developing algorithms for seating on airplanes. And they're like, hmm, maybe we can apply similar things to, to scheduling at a talk your talk. And so smart scheduling is a company that uses predictive analytics to see when a patient, predict when a patient might be a no-show or cancel and have intelligent double bookings. Hermes IQ is a really awesome company that started at a health hack fund when this doctor came and said, you know, I just have piles of faxes that come in every day and they're just piled up on my desk and I'm sure there's important information in there, but I just don't have time to go through them. So these engineers came together and were like, there has to be a better way to do this. And the really interesting thing about Hermes IQ is that they began at one half on, did really well there, got their team together, kept working on the idea, and then said, hey, we're not quite focused enough, we want to narrow our idea a little bit more, uh, get some new ideas in our team, and then they participated in another health hack line to catalyze their team for even more. They've done it, so they're basically intelligent management of clinical information, taxes and other types of unstructured information. And they participated with Techstars Boston, and they have customers. Finally, triage tackles the problem of communication between an ambulance and the hospital. So basically, this paramedic came to a health hack on and she said, you know, when I wheel a patient into the emergency room, I feel like I have to tell my story dozens of times. I have to repeat what happened to the nurse, to the resident, to the attending, and she felt like she was playing a game with the telephone. So during the main session, she synced up with a doctor who knew what was going on from the hospital side and a developer. And they are they have been working together to develop an easy way of communicating between ambulance and the hospital to hopefully save lives, get things, um, get information transferred faster. And they're piloting their solution at a hospital in Boston. 
So health hackathons are having a real impact on the world. Inter MIT Happy Medicine has been around for a little over three years at this point. There's been about 10 companies over three years. They've got nearly $18 million of funding, participated in these really prestigious incubator programs, Techstars, YC, Rock Health. And they have real customers, they're doing real pilots, and they're going through FDA. So that was just MIT hacking medicine students. Health hackathons are growing exponentially around the world. There were three in 2010 and nearly 80 this past year. We've been very fortunate that we've been involved with over 20% of those health hackathons all around the world. So something I want to, a resource that I want to invite you all to check out is on the MIT hacking medicine website, there's a health hackathon database. So this is the name, the date, the partners, the winners of every single health hackathon that's ever happened in the world. And check it out. It's a great resource to see what's been going on in this field. Health hackathons are happening everywhere, all around the world. And health hackathons are engaging everyone. These are just some of the partners that we've worked with. So it's not just hospitals and medical companies that are interested in health hackathons. We work with Samsung, GE, <coughs> all these companies that are realizing that now is the time to get involved in health So my reason for being here today, in addition to the time you and wanting to come back at any chance I get, is that I believe the tribal is one of the best All the ingredients are right here. There is an amazing university, medical centers, engineering schools, business schools, there's industry, you have investors. So all the ingredients are right here. And I think health hackathons can help catalyze the entrepreneurial energy of the people even more than the other. So if you thought some of these things I talked about today were interesting. Want to learn more? Here are three ways to learn more and get involved. So, first, MIT Hacking Medicine is working on something that we call the Hacking Box. So, this is everything that's in our heads for how to create a health hackathon put down on paper. It's going to be a portal on our website. So, long descriptions of every little part of the health hackathon with instructional videos, with templates. So, that'll be live later this month if you're interested in doing that your own health hackathon. Second is we have our big brand hack event coming up. So this is one of the largest health hackathons in the world. Nearly 400 people will be there April 24th to 26th. So I invite you all to attend that. And doctors will recognize this. The model we talked about in terms of learning to do health hackathons is see one, do one, teach one. So the seeing one is really important, and if you're able to make it up to Boston, I highly encourage you all to attend that. And then finally, there's never been a health hack fund in North Carolina before, but hopefully that will change very soon. We have some amazing UNC students right here, raise your hand. Um, so they're planning to have a health hack fund in September, uh, and that would be an amazing thing for all of you to get involved. So if any of these opportunities sound interesting, at the end of my talk, there's these sign-up sheets here. Enter your name, your email, what you're interested in learning more about, and we'll add you to our listservs and get you plugged in to the Hackathon community. You know, there's never been a better time to be a health care entrepreneur. And health hackathons are a way for you to get plugged into that health entrepreneurship regardless of if you've had decades of medical experience or if you've never thought about this. All of us have a stake in what the future of medicine looks like because all of us will interface with the healthcare system at some point in our lives. So I hope to see you all at a health hack on very soon. Thank you so much.
but we're going to be here to take questions. Uh, yes? Where was that held? The health start? America Underground in Durham. Durham, okay. So uh, it's very similar in terms of a three day time span, you get your idea, and then there's a judge. <coughs> so, and that was the first health startup weekend. Cool. Different name, but still the concept. That was health focus. Yes. yes. And we welcome your involvement in the, in the UNC, hopefully, UNC, Duke, NC State, RTP health hackathon in September.
Okay, so some of these stories that you highlighted here, um, do, these, do these folks um, have invest, investors now backing them? And, and, and you mentioned that some of them um, are going to be up to processors. Who's, uh, who's managing that part of the business in the world? Sure. So, I mean, these are full startup companies now, so they hire people. Um, they're, they have their own system for running things. So I don't know in particular who's, who's doing it with them. The metrics, they're the big ones that are doing it for me right now. Um, but, yeah, after the half time, you know, companies in the teams incorporate, they form an entity, they raise money from investors, and many of them have raised money from the Yes, sir.